And we are live, Mr. Flagler. That's good, Mr. Rosenbauer. It's good to see you. You look tan back from your trip to, to was it Argentina or Chile you went to? Argentina. Uh, Argentina. Yeah, almost a month down there. Uh, wow. Three, three different locations, but, uh, you know, with travel in between and getting down there, so it turns out to be almost a month by the, by the time I'm done. Wow. But and you were, hosting, you were hosting trips down there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. And re really good all the way around. Uh, I, I, you know, it's kind of the shoulder season for them down there uh, mm -hmm. this time yeah. of year. It's getting toward yeah. winter in the Southern hemisphere. And, but for me, I just love fall and getting to have fall twice a year is, is just, just perfect. As far as I'm concerned, good temperatures, good weather. Uh, yeah. Everything was great. Good, good. It's good. It's good. So here we are. Welcome to our monthly tie-off. Sorry about the change in um, date and time. Both Tim and I had a, had a bunch of conflicts. I had a school pickup today that I normally don't have to do. And so we had to do it at four. And then Tim could only do it today. Uh, so Tim's been traveling and has guiding and all kinds of other things to do. So welcome, everyone. Um, yes, if welcome. you're new, if you're new to one of these... Uh, you're new to one of these tie-offs welcome we try to have fun and we <laughs> hope you have fun and uh feel free to to tease us uh you're the peanut gallery you're going to get to vote at the end feel free to uh to give us grief however however you'd like and speaking of giving grief Mr. Flagler. Oh, here it comes. What, what possessed you to want to tie a size 14 black gnat? Uh, what century are you from? I was under pressure. I was under duress. Duress uh, from what? Well, I had to Ray come Bergman? Up, no, I had to come up with a fly before I left for Argentina, and it was just, just popped into my head like that. And so... Uh, but it a also, size 14 black gnat? Yeah. Um, when I first started fly fishing, and, and I really wasn't fly tying at the time, and this is in the, the north country of New York, up uh, north of the Adirondacks, and yeah. I, I'm not kidding you. You could go into any gas station or you know even convenience stores, and they always had those little cardboard sheets with you know flies in little cellophane bags stapled yeah, to them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, as far as dry flies go, a black gnat and a mosquito, which were oddly fitting for the North country of New York, right, um, right. were, were staples in, in all of them. And so I, you know, I really wasn't tying flies at the time. So I, I think they were 35 cents a piece or something ridiculous. And uh, I'd always get black gnats and mosquitoes uh, for dry flies. And, so that popped into my head and you know you could have picked the mosquito <laughs> instead of the black net that's a well, that's at least a moderately useful fly yeah uh, are you good are you gonna fish where are you gonna fish a size 14 black net other than a brook trout stream in somewhere where they've never seen a human being before <laughs> well yeah probably there um yeah yeah and yeah that's that's about it but i mean it, it looks like a black in gray bug sort of so you know you know on what, these Deep tying side. sessions we both practice and and i you know i use these to fill my fly box but what the hell am i going to do with <laughs> 10 size 14 black gnats <laughs> i don't know and, and what am i going to do with i got i got about 20 and none of them are good so um... <laughs> none of mine are any good either <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna get out the butane lighter and get my hooks back. I think <laughs> yeah. it's be the way to okay. go. Okay, so I got a question for you before we start. Yeah. How many do overs do we get on setting the wings? Because we should establish that before I, we start. Well, see, in, 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 again, this is kind of one of the reasons for for doing this pattern. Mallard slip wings are just horrible. As far as I'm yeah, concerned, yeah, they yeah. Uh, they're they're a relic. Um, I, I know I'm going to get some grief for saying that, but uh, they they just don't they don't hold together past one cast, one false cast, and you know they whoosh, all, all frayed generally. 
and and so it's just the kind of the initial look of the fly but yeah at the yeah. same time it's it's also a, a a good exercise i've i've never ever even once been able to tie mallard slip wings the way most people tie them okay so uh, the, the the way i tie them in is really really very different uh it doesn't come of out all the time is. Of yes. course it will. Of course, course it, it will, will be, be different. You but and I, I are going to time totally differently. <laughs> I've, I even, <laughs> this time around, I mean, I, I searched every video that I could find on online, uh, yeah. saw other guys doing it in the more traditional manner, um, uh, yeah. and uh, went back through books, uh, even referred to uh, AK Best's production tying book to see what he did. Uh, that didn't work. And so I, I, I am back to the way I first learned to tie them, gosh, almost 40 years ago. And yeah. it, it was my, my way of getting around the, the problems that I was having. And uh -huh. so I'm sure I'm going to catch a little flack for it, but it, it kind of works for me. So I used to tie these commercially back when I, you know, when I, when I was a teenager and I was tying flies commercially, I used to tie like blue quill. Blue oh. quill uh, dries with, uh, you know, the slip wings. A, a, yeah, yeah, blue done with a quill body. And I tied them with duck slip wings and I tied little Marriott dries. Oh, and, man. Yeah. And I, I used to be better at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not any good anymore. I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. I, I, I just, I feel for anybody that would have to tie these things commercially. And yeah. the other thing is, and, and we can talk about it a little bit, is the import uh, with mallard slips. Uh, the rest of this fly is, it's, I don't want to say it's a gimme, but um, it, the, the rest of the fly is pretty standard dry fly, Catskill style dry fly. And you're just, all you're doing for the rest of the fly is trying to me not mess up those mallard slip wings. And yeah, yeah. whether you're tying in the tail or wrapping the hackle or dubbing the body, uh, everything comes down to the mallard slip wings. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, aside from the, the techniques used to tie in the wings and get them to be correct, it's also really important to have the correct material to do it. And the, 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 it's very hard to, to find feathers, matched feathers, mallard primary feathers uh, yeah. that, are, that are really, really good anymore. Um, and, and I think so, there's, only, there's only a small portion of the primary feather that's optimum for tying these slip wings. I, I, I would agree. The, the lower part of the feather... Yeah, yeah. Turn on video yeah. here. And but um, you know, uh, everybody who's who's watching and, and hearing us complaining and struggling uh, with this, <laughs> you know, look at this as a historical lesson because this is the way a lot of a lot of dry flies used to be tied. The first, you know, the first English dry flies, most of them had uh, duck slip wings because they do look good. They look really good when after you tie them in. Um, most of the time. To, yeah, as, as Tim, <laughs> yeah. If you get them right, they look really yeah. good. Um, a couple casts later, and a fish, and you know, it's all over. But so I, I do have a pair. Uh, a friend of mine is, is great with stuff like that, and uh, the, these are mallard wings, uh, matched wings, right, right and left. And the I've already used a couple of the primary feathers. The, the way you get at these, uh, you know, and. and you got messed up ones like this one. You can't, you obviously can't use that part when you're doing this though. Oh, kind of learn my lesson. Don't try to pull the feather all the way out. Uh, it, it does not go well. I, I found that, you know, a pair of wire cutters to snip one out and then you go just, you can pull these guys back. Sometimes these go shooting all the way across the tying, tying room. I pull mine out. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, well, maybe it would be a good idea to pull them out, huh? I use so tin those... snips. I use tin snips on mallard wings when I take them off the bird anyways. So there's, so... there's the match set. So right you left. didn't you didn't answer my question. How many do overs should we agree <laughs> on for the wings? I'm I'm going to say on the wing. What do you want? Two, it's going to be two or three. Yeah. 
let's but see, let's... That, that, to me that's part of it tom in, in the with this you, you you have to be prepared to do a do-over and yeah, i think yeah. even the best tires i i think ak best mentioned it in his book if it if it doesn't come out pull it off do two more slips and, and go from there yeah. i also have you know i traditionally I, I read that this is is done with four slips two on each side which mm. i i mean one on each Ugh. side is a pain in the neck but two on <laughs> each side are you kidding me i never um, did it that way i never yeah did i tried way. and it what did not go well yeah all right and so let's say let's say we'll say three because the, the rest okay. of the fly isn't that hard so no yeah it, it's it's rest you know, of the fly pretty, is pretty really standard um so who goes first it's your pick who goes my first? pick. So what does that mean? I don't know. I don't that know. means we I never, go first. We, we, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll cheat then. Uh, Why well, so, are you going to tie your tail in first? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some <Yes. best>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'll show you the hook no, and yeah. then you go. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tie yeah. the wings in. You have to tie the wings in first. Well, you know, you don't have. To. Okay, so this is a size fourteen hook, uh, uh, pretty standard. It's one uh, X fine. Uh, I, I kind of like the proportions on this one. Uh, I think a little longer shank than maybe like uh, on the you know old nine four eight four zero or or whatever. Um, yeah, for thread, I'm, yeah. For thread, the, I'm using this is a, I think this is a Vivas thread like ten aught. Uh, I want to keep the Thread small, but small diameter. But at the same time, you, you need to put a good bit of pressure on these mallard slip wings to get them to seat. And uh, so, also one of the things that I found is where you position the wing is. Phil, can you make Tim big here? There we go. By, by the way, everyone, Julia is still on maternity, so Phil is uh, Phil is producing today. Phil Monahan, say so hi, I, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. <laughs> Phil's a little shy today. Yeah. Anyway, so one of the things with the position of this being really critical, I, I, I'm back. I'm like a hook eye and a half back i i tend to go too far back when i'm tying these things in and so i i kind of push a little further forward and one of the things i'm going to do here just to make absolutely sure that that thread stays there is i'm going to do just a, a three or four turn whip finish going forward and when you do that going forward your thread already messes up um but your your thread kind of stays right in that position uh, for, for tying in these slip wings, kind of very easy to, to, you know, to either work too far up or too far down the shank when, when you're doing this. And I, I really want them to be right there when they tie them in. All right. So I, I have a pair. These I, I haven't used yet. I, I, you just saw me cut them out of the wings. And so what I like to do, I tried a bunch of different things for keeping the pairs together. And I, I've ended up in, in using little um, wire ties, I guess. And uh, they they seem to work pretty well. You can tape them. You can do painters holes. tape, painters tape. Yeah. <laughs> Rosenbauer tape, as we like to call it. Um, <laughs> but w I'm going to take the same hook that I uh, that I'm using and I'm going to use that as the gauge. The, the hook gap will be the same. The mallard slip wing will be the same width as that hook gap. And it just having it in plunger style hackle pliers just makes it a little easier to sneak it in there. The other thing is when you cut these out, you got to be really pretty careful. You don't want to stab the feather. And again, this is going to go flying, not far. <laughs> and same thing, if you come in like this, you can end up snipping into the other fibers. And that's not cool. And so I just get these 
position. They're relatively the same size. I'm not going to mess with them. This one's just a hair bigger, but but to me that's that that's nominal. Um, and so it's Tom's turn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, I'll, no, I'll go I'll, ahead. And... No, I'll go. I'll go if you want. Okay. Because I'm going to do a totally different. Th I'm going to do everything you said not to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Phil, you can make me bigger now, or my mallard wings bigger. Thank you. So I have a pair of mallard wings too. They're not nice and um, fluffed out like Phil's because this Tim's. is the way. I... Yeah, Tim's. Whatever Tim's your name Phil's, is. Yeah. And I'm going to do just exactly what Tim said not to do. I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take a quill and break it off. They come off pretty easy. And again, matched, matched pairs helps. Whoops, sorry. And the one thing you want to, one thing you want to do right away is, is the good stuff is right in here, but this, this whitish stuff, that way down low is is kind of fragile and it's too white. So you just strip that off and get rid of it. And then you do the same thing on the other wing, come up to the point where the feathers start to get good. And I don't, I don't measure like Tim does. I, you know, if you're tying enough of these, I just, I estimate so I come in and I've already tied a bunch of these. So I just come in and snip it. I'm sorry, Tim. But wow. That's what okay. I do. You and that's way you. too. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the other one. And I try to, I try to get them both the same. And then, you know, I'm doing this backwards. Then I measure it against the hook. So I'm going to go over to the hook. And... I don't have a hook in the vise yet. That would help. And I've got like, wow, these are giant. I got these way too big. That looks like a size 10. No, that's a 14. So that's way okay. too big. So so the way to if 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 they're if they're too wide or if one of them's too wide, the way to deal with these feathers is to just peel off one at a time. until you get them so they so they match and i think i'm still I'm gonna measure this yeah i'm still too wide and so i would use the flagler method because what i'm doing is you know i could be wasting i'm wasting wasting wings here so now i'm gonna take this one just peel a fiber off. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, so I've got a pair there. So I'm I'm where you are, Timmy. Okay, Tommy. Um. Uh oh. Hold on. <coughs> Little. Got to get the cameras back on. Conserving power. So, hopefully they're back on. When, uh, this is where things get a little different for me than most people. Um, I am going to, I want to tie the wings in. I'm going to hold them like this. There, there are a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can use a, a dubbing needle, but I really, in the end, I found the best way to get them evened up and splayed and notice the the tips are pointing up uh for me and nice and even the the tips you can slide them back and forth it's not too bad i and so now uh I, i've shown other ways to do this in video but i i'm kind of back to just squeezing in between my fingertips this is um kind of a, a tricky part and this is where i i really go uh off the rails compared to most people i'm going to tie them in like this Okay, most people tie them in so the wings. What? Point. Yeah, I know, I know this, but it. Oh it's the, my god! Yeah, it is the only way I've ever been able to tie these things, and so you you can take points off for it. But 
I'm going to put them in like this. I tend to make the wings too long, so I'm going to kind of really make an effort to go short here, about a hook shank in length, and they actually come out longer than that in the end. But I mean, this, this is the whole tie. This is the whole tying sequence in a nutshell. I have them pinched, and I'm going to do a pinch wrap. I hope come straight up and loop my thread back down. I'm not putting any pressure on it. And you might actually see that those, those quills are off the hook shank by a little bit. Then I'm gonna pull straight up and try to just collapse. Good bit of thread pressure there. Take another loop. Again, these are pinch wraps kind of going forward for me. And then this is where the rubber meets the road is when you release Ooh, are those wings they, together. They, they look good. Uh, so far, so good. I got, a, I'm already crowding the head here a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I had a little thread curly in there. Oh, this is a thread snip opportunity. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Um, to Damn. disappoint you there. <laughs> I know you were hoping. <laughs> All right, um, so the next step, and again, this is where it gets dicey because you, the, the, the wings are looking pretty good, but they're obviously swept back. And so what I'm gonna do is just very gently pull them forward and get a wrap underneath there like that. Ooh, they look good. And the other thing, and I don't, gosh, I can't even, Remember, somebody must have showed this to me. I, I did not invent this on my own. So you take your a thin bodkin, put it up there, and just start. It's a way to get those thread wraps tucked right up underneath there, okay? To support the wing. Now I'm going to take my bodkin. and try to get these a little separated and pulled forward without splitting them. Oh God, is this pressure? Holy cow. They're looking Whose good. Whose idea man. was this? I, I don't know, but they're looking good. Well, here's where you're going to get mad at me. You're going to figure eight them. I'm not going to figure eight them. Oh, figure eighting it, it I just, again, I have had no luck. I am yeah. going to go, this is my cheat. I, I, you can't see me doing this, but I'm using fly tire Z-Ment. And I'm going to get uh, a nice bodkin uh, full uh, of fly no, tire Z-Ment. You're not, not going to do that. Right down the middle. Okay. And what hopefully this does is reinforces the bottom of the feather... but also allows me to coax these forward. And they, when you're coaxing them forward like that, I believe that dog's doing that on purpose. Yeah. Just to mess him up. Oh, I split it. Nope, didn't. So, biggest thing here is to learn to stop messing with them. And to me, that's that's not bad. Uh, they will get pushed further forward when I uh, when I go to hackle the fly. But that's the way I about the. Oh, I got a nasty thread thing going. Um, that's about the only way I've ever figured out how to do these wings. They look good. And they're, they're not, they're not overly stiff. They're still soft at the top. It's just that, oh, I just pulled those two apart. Come on, you. Oh, I... can't believe it's I just right. did that. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. Let me just try one more thing here. Sometimes you can marry them back together. 
Yeah, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't. I, I just won't. I would I would just leave it to No, I'm gonna I, I need one more try. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Do you want to take a uh, turn, Tom, or should we No, you go right ahead, Jim. Okay. I <laughs> what happened is my tying thread got all jacked up there. It split. Yeah, well, maybe next time you'll use Orvis thread. A couple of folks want to know if there's something you could put on the uh, slips, such as flex cement yeah. or hairspray. One of the things that has been recommended in the past is a uh, workable fixative Krylon, which which does help a little bit. But the, the problem with the Krylon is it's, it's extremely easy. I'm just going to talk as I get started again the problem with the krylon is it's so easy to over krylon it and then the the wings don't want to seat at all uh it's just it's like it's like trying to compress a piece of plastic or something and uh does not work very well yeah. so um yeah flex cement uh, i've seen people use that in the past Another question for you, Tim. Yeah. Uh, do you ever burn your wings instead of trimming them? Um, on these, no. Um, I, I guess you could. That would, uh, you know, I, I don't trim these. It, you know, it's not like I'm going to cut the, cut the tips off them or anything. And another wings, question is, if you weren't going to use these ancient technology quill steps <laughs> what would be your modern equivalent well for me anyway i i'd absolutely just go with like i i, I love the the way uh you know wood duck looks with little modeling in it um i i just oh wow is this thread messed up um No, I'm just or hackle tips, hen hackle tips. Had, well, yeah, but there, I mean, hen hackle tips can be almost as big a pain as the mallard slips. Uh, particularly if you don't have the right hackle tips, they end up, you know, a lot of them look like seriously pointy. And uh, I, ha I have a really cool, I, I don't even know where I got it. It's, it's a, over? yeah, um, we can. It's a it's an old hen neck that's that's got rounded tips and and beautiful little hackle points. Okay, guys, I apologize, but we did say two chances. So come on, Tim. We said three, three. And again, folks, I, I this is it's something that I expect when I'm tying these things is that, that this is going to happen and that I'm going to mess up. And again, kind of hover, pinch that so it's not compressing it. And I don't compress until I pull straight up. And ideally, you want the, the wings to pucker on the outside, I believe, not the inside. So there's that, there's that little pucker right there and maybe just maybe i got a little pucker on the far side so i'm i'm feeling pretty good about that one they look good again tim thank you but and you didn't crowd the eye this time i, I didn't crowd hoping, the eye i was but... i was hoping you would have <laughs> had, to, had to live with that uh... and again you just you just have to be gentle And it already split. I'm going to go with it, though, Tom. Yeah, I know I have to. Doug wants to know if you could possibly you apply the Krylon after the feather was on the hook. Yeah, you can. I did. I actually messed around with that. Um, like like at this point, getting the getting everything spread apart where I wanted it, and then whip finishing. You know, having 
having the fly, taking it off because I didn't want to do the Krylon here on my tying bench with cameras and everything like that. Put it in plunger style hackle pliers, just gave it a light spritz and it, it, it worked great. The only, I think the only issue with that is that the wings get too stiff and it might flutter in helicopter uh, when, when you go to cast it. Um, yeah. And yeah. so didn't really want that to happen. And you never really know who's watching these things, these little tie-offs. And I, I'm sure that I'm breaking all sorts of tying rules right now and didn't want to, I mean, just the, the super glue alone is probably giving people agita, but. No, I don't think so. It's trying I to. Don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think we have a lot of super glue users and, and, yeah. and somebody, somebody is going to want to use uh UV cure resin on these wings too. Well, and, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm not. Can I switch it? Yeah, I'm not kidding you. A light UV cure resin, you know, a low viscosity one, would just be awesome on here. I just can't use this stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with that. No, they look good. They look yeah. good. Close enough. Let me just get my thread relocated rearward without messing anything up all right got one little slip there but whew, it's mill of time that's my turn all right here we go here goes nothing and i do mean nothing oh i haven't even started my thread yet that idea of whip finishing is a good idea tim but i'm i'm not going to because you did so I don't want to <laughs> steal any of your no, I don't want to steal any of your techniques. But I do think uh, that that you know, getting a getting a little base of thread there is important. Gives you a little bit wider, wider base. And like Tim, I find that these tend to set back too far. So I'm going to be fairly close to the eye, and then I'm going to take my my wing quills and good way to deal with these is to wet your finger and then you can pick them up. Um, and then you put them in your, put them in your hand. And of course they're going to be, uh, convex sides together and then line them up by sliding them back and forth. Make sure they're lined up. Those look pretty good. Now I, I set my wings differently and this is, well, I do everything differently than Tim, but I, Tim, you notice Tim had his, the high side of his wings forward. I do the high side of my wings back. And the reason I do that is because uh, that's yeah, the switch, switch cameras, Tom. Well, I'm not doing anything yet. Oh, that, sorry. That was the way I was taught many years ago. So, and we want these to be about a shank length and I'm going to cover them up with my thumb and I'm just going to do a pinch wrap. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to come down and pull straight down and I'm pinching these wings above the hook shank. It's tough for you to see. And I'm going to even lift up a little bit on the wings and slowly draw the thread down. And then I'm going to do that once more. So I'm going to come up and you want to make sure that these, these thread wraps go in exactly the same place and then check it out. And you can futz them back into position. Now they, they went back way too far. You know what? I'm going to do the flagler whip finish. So there's my one. I'm going to do the flagler whip finish trick. Thank you for that, Tim. Sure. My pleasure. That's still, that's still back too far. All right. So I got to cut. I got to cut a couple more. Sorry about the dog. And I'm just going to get rid of that because it, it, it already split. And I'm going to cut a slip. Try to do this quickly. Cut another slip. See how they look. 
One of them is a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna peel a piece off. Gonna put them together, line them up. Oh, that's gonna bug me. <clears throat> too bad. And then I'm gonna try it again. So line it up above the hook shank, pinch wrap, pinch wrap, pull straight down, pinch wrap, pinch wrap, pull straight down, and then take a look. And I think those are going to be as good as I'm going to get them. I think they look oh, pretty no. good from here. No, they're not. They're crooked. They're crooked. Jeez. I'm going to try. I'm going to try doing it again with the same, the same quills. No, it's not because otherwise we'll be here all day. Is this number three or four? No, this is number two. <laughs> <laughs> sure it is. All right, and then you want to all wrap, if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, you always want to wrap back away from those wings, right? Right. You don't, you don't want to wrap toward them. And then come in and cut your wing at an angle. And then you want to secure those butts before you do anything else so that that wing doesn't roll. And then come right back up to the base of the wing raise it up come in front take a couple wraps see if they're straight up enough maybe angle a little bit over on the other side take your dubbing needle and that looks like shit <laughs> So I've got a bad fiber on the other side. I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just going to snip it off. I have two bad fibers. I can maybe I can marry them together. Ah oh, shit. All right, I'm doing three. Sorry, I hate that. That's the hazard with these things. Is is just. God. I'm sure there are guys out there that can whip them out and get it perfect each and every time, but yeah, I know one even, of them. I notice even Charlie Craven sweats when he ties these. Yeah. Although he, on his video, he, he did it masterfully. I got to tell he you. He did. He did. Yeah. Oh, so you watched his video too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, See, I didn't. I, I was just told. You can preen these wings. Yeah, sure. You were just told. <laughs> I always watch Charlie. Yeah, he's great. All right. So here we go. Here we go again. This is my last chance, right? I. Okay. This is my last chance. This is, this is it. If I screw this up. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not even going to finish. And I don't pull up. I pull straight down. I just broke my thread. Oh, that's that's another thing. If if you if you I I know that I noticed if you keep resetting your wings your thread phrase and then it breaks like the fourth, you know, if you keep untying and have you which is what that? exactly what I did, I believe. Yeah. Are you on the wrong camera, Tom? Or All are right. you coming back here? Yeah. Oh, you didn't see me break my thread. Well, I just broke my thread guys and I reattached it. So I know you shouldn't have said anything. All right. I know. I'm trying to find those. I can't find those wings that I just, 
Oh, God. These are already bunged up. But this is my last chance. Why does that one fiber do that to me? Ugh. And I, I shouldn't even... Look at how far back those wings went. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh, Tom, but you, you are doing exactly what happens to me every time I try to tie that way, I'm the traditional to, way. I'm trying to scooch those wings forward. It God. looks like you... Yeah. No, they're You're still there. wait. Well, that's as good as I'm going to get it. It's my third try, so. Yeah. Like we were saying, folks, it's, uh, it's a tough go. I don't even want to finish this fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the rest is, to me, is pretty much standard i'm just gonna i won't even switch cameras here just gonna grab a few tailing fibers which are getting to be a kind of a pain in the neck in their own right to find tailing fibers that are long enough anymore Looks Did you okay. Say what you're using for your uh, th these are just, um, they are. Get this turned on, back on. I have a very important question for both of you. Yeah. Martin Marvin writes, why waste time on this pattern? <laughs> That's a good friggin' question, it, it, Marvin. It, it is. Marvin. It's an excellent question. One, one, of, one of the best. Um, so I, for tailing fibers, I'm just using from what I can get from these spade feathers out here. Uh, they're very hard to uh, find good spade feathers anymore. They've kind of been bred out of the birds. I believe we've talked about that before. Um, anyway, but from the same same cape, I'm using, um, you know, standard size 14 hackle. It is it is a really good question. Why, why tie patterns like this that, that, are, that are difficult, that aren't durable, that are you know, take 10 tries to get right for, for, you know, mortal men. Um, it, 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 it's more like a tying exercise is the way I well, look Well, is it even just... an attractive fly? But... I don't think. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think it's a very good looking fly. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Tie the whole freaking fly? You're not going to let me go? I, well, you said you want to. <sighs> okay. Would you well, like to go? Yeah, I'm gonna finish it. I'm just I was okay. just kidding. Okay. Right. Okay, so um I wait, I was gonna dub my body. Is that all okay? Right, dub your body, dub your body. Super fine dubbing here, guys. Just black. Tom, perhaps someone in the comments can suggest some deep breathing exercises that'll help you out. I am not a patient person. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you know that deep breath, okay. uh, deep breathing doesn't help me, and neither does friggin' meditation. Doesn't do doesn't do me any good at all. Meditation makes me angry. Yeah, I I read something recently about what uh, Navy SEALs do called box breathing, where you inhale and hold it for five seconds, exhale, hold it for five seconds, in whatever that is. I uh -huh. uh, 
uh, instantly hyperventilated and just got pissed. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's how well it worked for me. So. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to put my tails and body on too. And uh, as usual, I do it differently than Tim. So here's the trick. Here's the trick to getting good tailing fibers. Use Keo capes. Oh, Keo holy capes. Name, holy name drop. Look at those. Look at those. Keo capes have beautiful um, spade hackles on them. And so I'm going to just grab a feather and pull these straight out. Pinch them. Now I've got a bunch. And flip them around in my fingers. And, oh, I have to bring my thread back to the end. To the end. And then I, I tie in my tails differently than Tim. I start at the bend. I'm going to get rid of a couple of those. I actually got too many, Tim, believe it or not. Too and many. Wow. he wanted about a shank length. And then I hold them pointing toward me. And I just let the thread roll those tails onto the hook. And that really, usually really sets them almost perfectly. And then come in and get rid of these. I'd like to cut that wing right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then come up to behind the wing finish that off actually you know what they're not not horrible no they they're they're holding their own there tom i wouldn't i wouldn't sweat that too much and then i'm going to use super fine dubbing just going to grab a wisp of it like about that much, not much. And I'm going to double wind my body. Um, I like double winding uh, bodies. You know, we double wind, we, we uh, wind back and forth with floss and tinsel, stuff like that to get a nice taper. And I find, so I'm just, I'm just dubbing thin, thin, uh, dubbing on my thread with a little bit of an hourglass shape. So it's skinnier in the middle. In fact, it's it's kind of thick and and then it gets skinny. So I'm I'm kind of doing I'm kind of dubbing in reverse, or I'm starting out thick. Maybe you can see it there. And then it's really easy to get a nice smooth uniform taper when you double wind because you can even it out as you go forward. Although that looks really bad. How does it look on camera? Oh, it doesn't look too bad, uh, but it's a little bit it's a it's a little bit more durable body when you double wind it like that. Um, so anyway, there it is. Luckily, you can't see the other side. Yeah, well, I tell you what let let me hackle this pig and <laughs> <laughs> let's end let's end the let's pain. end this misery now. <laughs> <laughs> straight to strong yeah straight to strong drink um i'm boy i'm glad i get to pick the next pattern jeez so am i like i said I, th this was i i it was done under duress how much did you have to drink when you I decided to tie this joan oh boy Joan called where where did you call me? Where was I? I, don't, Argentina. I was in Argentina and, and Joan said, I need a fly. Yeah. And Tom how, said how many, I need a fly. How many bottles of wine had you had? Uh, it's Fernet. That's my uh my vice down there. Fernet and Coke. So good. Are you a Fernet guy, Tom? I don't even know what it is. You don't know what Fernet is? You've you've been to Argentina and you don't know what Fernet is. Uh, no, I mainly spend my time in Chile, and uh, uh, Pisco is my. What is I my... know, I, I'm I'm watching it, Joan. But 
that that thing is thing is starting to watch. look like it's thing is starting to look like mine. Well, we're just going to get rid of that problem right then and there. Oh, oh you are. Come on. Why don't we no, just don't give, why don't we just give up? No. I I'm going to I am going <laughs> to When when my own wife who's sitting next to me is groaning going, <laughs> and going don't 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 Sorry. She can see it better on the on the the monitor than I can can yeah, see it. I, I can see it too. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, it looks bad. Incredible bo vote of confidence. Well, other have, than that, yeah. one little <laughs> what hackles all twisted up. What is this? The uh, first year fly tires tie off? Or yeah, something? yeah. Th this is this is really bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got a hackle going. I might have to change the voting at the end to who tied it worse. Yeah. Yeah, really? Oh, my God. Boy. Is that terrible? Yeah, it is. Do we get a well, redo on the hackle? No. Yes, we do. No, no you don't okay. get a redo. You, go, you do your thing. You do you, Tom. You just you just unwound your hackle. I know. Oops. Are you? Do, oh, you, no. I, I, it's, it just broke. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so that's your finished fly. No. You don't get a redo what? on the hackle. No, go ahead. Redo your hackle. No, they, they'll get the idea. I don't want to keep yeah. people too long. All right, why don't you redo nonsense. your hackle? Yep, well, you're doing your thing. Yeah. Okay, so, again, I really like Keo necks. Um, I think they're they're great tying necks. Um, I think they wind really well. They have thin stems. So I'm going to come in here and grab a couple. And I'm going to use two feathers. Um, <gasps> yeah. I like two feathers on a, on a traditional dry fly like this. I like two feathers and it helps if you pick them from the same area of the Cape, cause they're going to be, they're going to be a little uh, closer in uniformity. And I think these are the right size. Let me just double check here. Yeah, good enough. Okay. And if you use neck hackles, be, um, don't, don't be shy about stripping, especially with two hackles. Don't be shy about stripping them way up on the stem because they're, they have thicker stems than saddle hackles. And so I know it looks like a waste by coming way up here on these hackles, but it's going to result hopefully in a better looking fly. <laughs> That remains to be seen. But you can see how those th stems are nice and th uh, thin. I'm going to pick these up with a wet finger. And, you know, in the old days, we had to use two hackles on dry flies. Sometimes we had to use three, believe it or not. Now like you can one? get now you can get a half dozen flies with one saddle one. hackle. Yeah, especially on things like wolves and stuff like yeah. that, where you really yeah. wanted to hackle the living heck out of them. Yeah. So anyway, here we go. Um, so I'm going to tie both of these. Trying to line them up here off camera. Here, line these up and leave a little bit of bare stem. And then you want a nice flat base, so you want to tie those tie those in you know, as flat as you can alongside the wings. And I got a little stem sticking out. And then, so you wind, you take your first hackle, grab it with your hackle pliers. And I like dull side forward. I think that's dull side forward. It's hard to tell with this black hackle. Oh, I'm a shiny side forward guy myself. But you are really. I have. Gosh, we do and, so many things differently. It's. I know, and you leave a little weird. bit of you leave a little bit of uh, gap 
in between <laughs> your when you're turning two ankles, and then you take that first that first forward turn right in front of the wings, pull the wings back, and you usually get an equal amount. Ideally, it's an equal amount of hackle in front and back. And with neck hackles, you do sometimes have to. And then you want to hold that hackle straight up when you when you tie it off. God, that's a long head on there. Jeez. Well, and pretend it's gonna... Catskill style. Leave that turtle oh, knot really? space, Tom. Yeah, yeah, really. That's what it is. That's that's exactly. That's what that's what you were going for. And then with your second hackle, you want to just kind of wiggle it back and forth as you go to kind of work it in um, amongst the other hackle fibers. Uh, it looks terrible. And you want to come up to the base of the wing, right to the base of the wing, and then try to make that jump in front of the wing as short as you can. And I'm still wiggling. Hold the hackle straight up, tie it off. Wow, that is Catskill style. Oh, I can't see here. Sometimes your wings will go together, so just push them back down. And then if your hackle gets a little too close to the eye, this obviously did, you could take your thumbnail and just scooch it back a little bit, just kind of wiggle it back. I'm going to finish and end the pain. <laughs> I, I think we have like four viewers left on here, Tom. Yeah, well. Yeah. I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. There. Dude, that looks pretty uh, dang good. It looks better than I thought it would. Oh, you don't want to see that far side, yeah. though. <laughs> Someone a pointed little... out in the comments, Tom, that yours is a good fly for that one-eyed trout. Yeah. <laughs> always a jokester. Sure make sure I always cast to their right side. All right. Bill, I think, Bill, I think we're ready to, to yeah. uh, have people... <laughs> Uh, vote and uh, and get us the hell out of here. Yeah, how many votes of no confidence are we going to get? Yeah, really. Yeah, maybe maybe there is there an option for no confidence. Yeah. Okay, I just put the voting link in the comments. Click on that link and uh, we'll give you a few minutes. Yuck! <laughs> Who picked this fly? Uh. <laughs> Don't futz with it. You can't. You. I can't. No you're gonna, futzing. If you're going to do it, I'm going to do it. See, it's looking pretty good now. Yeah, when it's out of focus, it looks great. Yeah, when it when it, when it zoomed way out and out of focus. <laughs> But that's how you'd normally look at a fly if you're you're over the age of 50. Yeah, true. Something like that. Was I too close in before? No, oh, should I get okay? Should, I, I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna get out to the same perspective. Got a little hackle gap under the wings that I don't like. Two that one little have, split, though, it's just two hackles one, would have fixed that. One little split, your, but then my tail, hackle would have. Your, your tails are a little anemic too. Anemic? Did you say? Yeah. I said anemic. Yes, I said anemic. <laughs> Some folks can see the link, and others can't. Well, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know what's just... going on. We've got we've got a bunch of votes already, but obviously some people can't see it, and I don't know why. I wonder if they're on our Facebook as opposed to yours. Can you copy mm. it onto your Facebook, Joan? Uh, 
Oh boy. Oh boy. Hold on. I see it on the Orvis Facebook. I like Max's comment. My therapist prescribed tying 50 San Juan worms and calling him in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I notice on on your uh, on your videos, Tim, that the quilling dry was tied by Matt Grover and not you. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you notice that? Did you? I did notice that. <laughs> that is how much I hate quill wings. Yeah. It is just one of the th this is never quill wing. This is two quill wing dries in a row for me. I am never ever going to do another demo with quill wing dries ever. Oh, someone said it's not on the Orvis Facebook. I can't see it to put it online. This right. is all very strange because when I go to the Orvis Facebook, I do see the link. And where are the people well, who voted getting the link? Perhaps it's better if nobody even votes this time. Yeah. Well, let's call it a draw, Tom. <laughs> no, we've got I'd be more than happy with that. Yeah. We've got plenty yeah. of uh, plenty of votes. We've got enough votes. Hmm. I all of a sudden can't hear Phil. Yeah, I lost him too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on. We're definitely having technical difficulties. Right, yeah, just it. just add them up and. Add, add up what you got. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> drum roll, please. It's Flagler. Yeah. For, for the loss, or? <laughs> oh, my let camera me... <laughs> went out. He won or lost. Yeah. Let me be the first to apologize. No, Tim, Tim is a winner. Well, thank you guys. But uh, congratulations, Tim. I'm trying to thank get my you, camera Tom. back on here. That, my that battery was certainly. Went out. There we go. So I, I, I'd love to show you one of my better efforts, but out of the 20 that I have sitting here, I really don't have one. I have a couple that look pretty good. But Actually, not that, one's not, that one's not too bad. Yeah, not, not my favorite bug. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you <laughs> thinking about for next week? Let's move on past this. Next week? Next or next month. month. That's right. I don't. Someone I don't suggested know. a Parmacini bell. Yeah. Right. Uh, really. In your That's dreams. not going to happen. In your dreams. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out something. Maybe a San Juan worm. Yeah, something easy. <laughs> yeah. Something where we can really let our tying skills. Ed says, "Don't do this fly again." Ed, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, no problem there. I can I can tell you with with quite a bit of certainty that I will never tie a black gnat dry again in my life. Because I, I don't even want any in my box. <laughs> there are a lot of black flies up in the north country, Tom. So you know Yeah, but I, I got a better I got a better I got a better imitation than this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're this big too. And <laughs> yeah. And they have buck teeth. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, we've been we've gone well over an hour. Thank you for oh, uh, sh sharing our pain misery. With us and being good sports about this horrible fly. And um, we will let you know. We I don't think we have a date for next month, but we will we will let you know uh, when we're gonna tie off again. And I am not tying this coming Monday, but I am tying the following Monday. I'm going to be tying a, a beadhead uh, caddis pupa, beadhead uh, emerging caddis pupa. So easy stuff, or easier anyway. We've got a uh, request for a saltwater fly for next time, if you are so <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> wow well we don't I, I, feel, love I, I, I love tying saltwater flies but we don't get as we don't get as many people interested in saltwater flies so 
if, yeah. if, if we, you know, one request, uh, I don't know if more people want to see saltwater flies, uh, let us know on our Facebook page or something. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, thank you for your patience. And um, we'll see you the next time. Joan, Joan's pointing to the fade to black button. Too late. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs>